Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is June 28, 2023. This is a midweek edition. Tomorrow, we're going to get the jobless claim and also the GTP number before the market opens. So I thought I'd go and review the market and kind of prepare yourself what to expect for the next couple of days. Now, first, let's take a look at the indexes and see how they are are doing so far. Today, the uh, strongest uh, performer here, based on percentage, is the Dow Jones Transportation. It was up uh, 0.77% or 118 points. And also followed by the small cap, the Russell 2000, up almost half a percent at a uh, positive uh, 8.7 point. Now, the worst performer is the Dow Jones Industrial. is down 0.22%. And the New York Stock Exchange composite and also the S&P is now 0.04%. So that's more like a break even. Likewise, the Nasdaq 100 is down 0.12%. I mean, up 0.12%, up 18 point. So that's pretty much break even. And looking at the uh, week to date so far, the week to date so far, the Dow Jones Transportation is the top performer and also followed by the Russell 2000, the small cap. And the worst performer is the Dow Jones Industrial only up a third of a percent. And even the NASDAQ 100, the technology heavy uh, index, is only up half a percent year to date. I mean, week to date. And of course, the year to date, the uh, NASDAQ 100 is still holding on to over 36 percent gain, while the uh, Dow Jones Industrial is only holding a little bit over 2 percent. Now, let's take a look at this market internal chart here. The uh, upper uh, quadrant is the uh, New York Stock Exchange and the lower part of the screen here is the NASDAQ. And looking at the up-down volume, here is the net up volume minus the down volume. So positive is good, negative is more selling than buying. So you can see today, most of the time, just uh, in the beginning, you know, we saw some a uh, little bit negative, a little bit more selling than buying early on. But throughout this session is pretty much, uh, you know, buying uh, overwhelm the uh, selling. Now, the interesting thing here is the advanced decline. You're looking at the advanced decline. This is a daily advanced decline, and this is a three-minute chart here. So each one of these bar is three-minute. And you see that when we open, soon as, uh, you know, shortly after we open, the advanced decline went down to almost a 1,000. More 1,000 uh, uh, more stock is down than up. Then... Uh, Shortly after that, we see this tremendous rally and came back up and turned positive, uh, you know, after uh, 11 o'clock or so Eastern time. And see, so it uh, turned positive here and went up almost uh, 500 more advancing issue than declining issue. So that kind of tell you that the market is, you know, going from a little bit of initial opening weakness into some sort of strength because it's rallying back up and you got more stock coming back from a loss to a gain. And also then, uh, you know, right here, you see a little bit of a chop and then came back up after uh, lunch hour and it just got to stay above it and got a little bit of a surge uh, into the close, although it did not come back up to the high of the day. Similarly, in the uh, NASDAQ market, you can also see a little bit more volatility in the NASDAQ market. Uh, you know, got more downside here initially at the open and then come back up. And then another little bit more uh, selling pressure down here in the midday. And then uh, into the close a little bit before uh, it uh, stay up and got some buyers uh, coming in and uh, bought back up. And I could show you a little bit what I think was happening here. Uh, and uh, looking at the advanced decline, similarly to the New York Stock Exchange up here, you see the initial uh, weakness in the uh, after the open, it was almost a thousand more declining stock than advancing stock, then the turn positive in the midday, and then uh, after the lunch hour, it turned a little bit of negative, then uh, at two o'clock or so, uh, after two o'clock or so, then uh, we see that uh, it came back up. And right now, you could see also the tick. The cumulative tick is uh, basically we're adding, uh, you know, the uh, 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 buying tick and a selling tick and just kind of get a net of this and then we just keep on, you know, uh, adding it up or, 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 you know, cumulative sum. So, uh, and you can see it is positive. That means there are more positive tick than negative tick throughout the session. And we did see a little bit of a selling here in the noon hour during uh, lunch hour here see that it went below minus 500. 
So when we see minus 500 take to minus 1000, then we uh, have some uh, possible uh, sell program institutions selling here. Likewise, when we uh, get up to uh, 500 and 1000, we have some uh, buy program. But in between, it's just basically, you know, just uh, chopping around here. And uh, But we did notice most of the time that it is spending above this uh, zero mark. I mean, there are more positive take, you know, buying on the uh, ass than, uh, 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 you know, uh, selling on, on the bid. So uh, so you kind of give it a little bit of a momentum to, to uh, uh, see that it is uh, on the buy side. And that's why we see these cumulative take uh, turning up positive and, uh, you know, move up higher throughout the day. It, I mean, uh, there are uh, constant more, uh, you know, uh, buying on the ass than selling on the bid. And likewise, in the NASDAQ market, a little bit more choppy. You can see the uh, cumulative tick is kind of, you know, oscillating between this zero line here. But at the end of the day, it came back up and finished positive. So again, looking at this here, we see seems to be a little bit more buying toward the buy side than the sell side. But we did see some sell program down here. Likewise, in the New York Stock Exchange. And this is just the index on the three minute candle. And you see, we got this little surge into the close here. And here's a different look of the internal along with the VIX. Uh, here's the S&P 500. You see that it opened if I uh, do this here. Uh, when it first opened, it was down about 10 points and then got into the low of the day, down almost 18 points. Then we rallied back up and uh, came up and uh, basically pretty much uh, up about three points and then pulled back a little bit into the, uh, you know, the, uh, the London close. And we see that was down about seven and a half point. Then into the lunch hour, we see that it was up about 12 point. Then after the lunch hour, well, almost after the lunch hour, uh, it was uh, down about 16 points. Then it gets kind of chopped around in the negative territory until near the end of the day. Then it's only down a little bit less than a point or so on, uh, on this chart here based on this last candle. And here, looking at the uh, new high, new low, we did see uh, throughout the day the uh, new high uh, outnumbered the new low uh, and ended the day at 84. And also the up-down volume ratio, although initially we saw a little bit uh, more selling than, uh, than buying uh, with the uh, negative up-down volume ratio. But uh, throughout the day, you know, after the initial uh, half an hour or so, uh, throughout the day, it pretty much uh, maintained a positive up-down volume ratio and closed the day at 1.27. So there's 1.2 to 1 in favor of the up volume. Then on the VIX here, the VIX is uh, pretty much uh, down here at multi-year low, still down here at 13.41. And the put call ratio, you can see that initially got pretty uh, you know, bullish here and then eventually kind of slowly come back up to this 0.75 level. So basically into this, uh, just about this uh, cautious hedge level here. And also looking at the, uh, the daily advanced decline, we noticed that the uh, daily advanced decline was uh, negative uh, throughout the morning session. In other words, there are more declining issue than advancing issue that turned positive into the lunch hour and just kind of bouncing around. So it was pretty, uh, quiet in the in terms of the advanced decline not much to say about it it wasn't a broad market decline or broad market advance in terms of uh, you know participation and if we look at these uh, daily uh, chart on the uh, the sentiment you see the VIX is uh, 13.43 the up down volume ratio is 0.75 and here is the up down volume ratio we see that the first three days throughout through the week has uh, been positive and also the advanced decline, also positive. And the new high, new low, also positive, or more new high than uh, new 52-week low. And it did come up the last couple of days in the New York Stock Exchange. There seems to be over 100 more stock, new 52-week high, and versus uh, down at the uh, 30 area for 52-week lows. And here's the uh, divergence between the cumulative AD line and the S&P 500. So we are still looking at this divergence here, a negative divergence, just a uh, reminder for those that have not been following. And here's the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is also, uh, you know, the last two days, it was a positive up-down volume ratio, 1.3 to 1 today. And I uh, got uh, only about 200, 199 more advancing issue than declining issue today at the end of the session. 
And here the uh, new low still outnumber the new high in the NASDAQ. And again, we are still looking at this negative divergence between the uh, NASDAQ accumulated AD line and the NASDAQ 100. Now let's take a look at this SPY here. Let me tell you why I think there is this little surge here into the close. And we uh, zoom in here, looking at this daily volume profile. You see that uh, we have these uh, shorts here. And it got squeezed up. And then we come back down here. But again, we're basically building a lot of volume down here at this... Uh, uh, low level here you see here you know been hovering around here and basically just building a lot of volume here and essentially uh, we are extended short a lot of a lot of short is being trapped here so uh so at the end of the day a lot of short do not want to carry this overnight then we basically come in and cover the short and that what what probably helped fuel this uh this surge into the close and here, if we look at the ES, the E mini S&P 500 future, you can see that you have a lot of shorts here. Extended short. You see this came down here. I think this is probably uh, one of the comments that Powell made today and probably uh, got this little flushing coming right back up. So uh, you see that uh, got a little bit of a poor low here. And then, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of short basically trap here. And at the end of the day, they basically uh, puke it out, <laughs> went and cover, and that's what uh, make this thing uh, comes up. And looking at the ES on this market profile chart, you can see that we have a poor low here. Okay, right now, you know, today you took out uh, yesterday's poor high, so that wasn't a surprise to see this thing spike up here and also fill in some of these single print. Now, there are some single print left down here that need to be filled. So tomorrow, I would not be surprised to see the ES come back down, take out this poor low, and then come down and fill these uh, single print. Then possibly maybe uh, you know come down to this lower lower area down here and try to test this low or this low here. Now before I go to the ETF for the indexes, I just want to remind those that are not uh, aware that I have a Substack page or that you are not subscribing to my Substack page. I do post additional material in my Substack page throughout the week and also in the weekend. So you might want to go and check it out and best yet subscribe to my Substack newsletter and then you will get that automatically on your uh, email inbox whenever I uh, post a uh, new uh, uh, post. Now let's start off with the uh, Diamond, the ETF for the Dow Jones Industrial. As you can see, I've been uh, alerting to you uh, in my Substack page post that to go and watch this here, right, to uh, to watch this this level at 343.69 and also the uh, resistance level somewhere around 338.66 here. And you can see today it's pretty much chopping around right at this level here. So right now we're basically watching to see would it be able to get above this level and move up to this upper range of the expected move or stay down here and come down to this potential support level, which is the gap right here that I'm looking at and to this lower range of the expected move. So that's basically what we're watching on the diamond, the Dow Jones Industrial ETF. Now let's take a look at the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. Now some of you have been asking me, where did I get these level? Well, uh, some of these level is basically from this composite volume profile and I'm basically picking off these level here on these, uh, you know, from these volume ledgers here, you can see this uh, ledge here, right? So I'm looking at this uh, particular ledge here, and this right here is in another volume profile, or here at this uh, high volume node, and then you see this ledge. Because on these ledges, if you look at it, right, you have these high volume at this uh, price level, then all of a sudden it drop down to almost hardly any volume at all. So that means you, 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 got, you, know, you basically got a rejection from these price level, you know, no trading activity or hardly any trading activity. I mean, there's uh, you know, seller or buyer do not accept those price level down there. And that's why you know, it's important to note those uh, level or those ledges because those are potential support and resistance area. And that's how I label or uh, extract some of these, le these level and uh, put that on watch here. So let's go and zoom this in and we could see what we are watching here on the uh, SPY. Right, for the SPY here, basically uh, we're watching this level here up up here at 
area and uh, that's basically uh, pretty much on this pivot and also this gap here okay and the other thing is i also in my post i said keep an eye on this uh, 435 435.48 you know this level here for potential uh, you know resistance so uh, if it uh, dip below this and come down then I'll be uh, watching this 430 429 area as a next potential target and also possibly come down here to this lower range of the expected move but if it's come up and bounce back up then uh, we'll be uh, looking at the upper range and also this uh, level on watch it's 439 area as the uh, near term or short term uh, target here. So you can see that it's been uh, chopping around here in this area at this 435.48. So it's kind of difficult to try to trade here. You know, if you uh, try to, uh, you know, get into this whipsaw, you're just going to get uh, chopped to death, right? You know, stop out into stop out, you know, in either direction. So it basically just kind of wait until it come up here and then see what kind of reaction it's going to get or could we short it back down into this area or wait until it come down here and then see what it's going to do is it going to come back up or is it going to break down and get into this area here because I'm looking at a chop into this area you can see this is like a little bit of a balance area and got a lot of trading activity going on here so if it, the price come in here it could chop into this area and then kind of trace it down to this 426 so one thing to watch is to see what get oh get uh, you know get down get below this zone here this area here into the 434 then take it down you know possibly you know look for a potential short and play it down to this 429 area okay but uh, I wouldn't be uh, chasing along up here into this zone here unless you are thinking about scalping you know just to uh, scalp this uh, a few points here uh, so basically it's uh, like a 30 you know 30 uh, S&P 500 points right so it's like three point on the S&P uh, S&P 500 ETF the SPY so that's basically what I'm looking at on the SPY here you know if we could uh, wait until to see what happened up here when it get up to this zone and see that we get a rejection back down and if it uh, you know dip below here see what we be able to get some sort of rejection and come down to this uh, uh, level here now here on the queue is quite interesting because I was uh, talking about watching this level here for uh, support and yesterday it did come down to this area before it got in bounce here so we see that right now we have got a couple of long legged doji uh, you know a top topping weight type of doji candle so this could be a little bit of a sign of uh, bearishness but also then we got uh, you know a couple of these uh, long legged uh, you know bottom uh, candle you know bottom wick uh, candle so that could be also bullish <laughs> so we're basically kind of trapped here in this range here so right now I'm just kind of watching to see what tomorrow jobless claim and the GDP report will do to this uh, QQQ the Nasdaq market what it pushes to come up to this 367.48 right and see what it get above and get into the zone or get rejected and push us back down here to this support level here and test this this low once again at 357.48 and then back into this lower range of the expected move so I'll be watching for a reaction to see what it come up here and get rejected and look for a little bit of a short swing you know trade and come down to this area here at 357 or watch this box here right because we have this range here so you could see what sort of reaction we get down here we might also could find some trade location for a little bit of a bearish trade uh, coming down and if you're thinking about scalping yeah you could do that you know if you want to play it up you know basically uh, break this uh, this area here this high do a little back test and then come up and shoot for these upper range and possibly this uh, pivot high here near 372 373 area and finally here's the Russell 2000 ETF IWM and you can see right here we'll basically have a watch level here okay and that would be somewhere around this 185 area okay and right now uh, we basically are looking at this uh, initial originally there was this support here and it broke the support and we're targeting this flag down here 
this 178, 88, see that it came down and got a nice bounce back up. So right now, it seems to be reclaiming this support level at 183.38 and into this upper range here. So we'll see, would it be able to stay inside this range and push up to here to this 189.90 or 190 area? This is one of the uh, resistance levels that I'm looking at. Or would it uh, come back down and break this support level once again and push us back down to this 178? Because it never got to this lower target that I'm watching here at this 178 or 179 level. So keep in mind, uh, keep watch on that. Tomorrow report could push it down to help push this thing down, or it could help it to uh, push it up to this 190. So 179, 190, those are the two target level, potential target level to keep an eye on. Just a reminder again, if you haven't checked out my Substack page, go check it out for these additional content that I post on my Substack. And the uh, link is uh, smtraderca.substack.com. You can also find the link in the description below. If you find the content to be informative and useful, be sure to smash the thumbs up to give it a like and help promote this video on YouTube. And if you are new to this channel and have not subscribed to this channel, you know, go and subscribe, click that subscribe button and subscribe to this channel so you will continue to be able to watch these contents for me. Thank you for watching and stay safe.